Hello folks, and welcome back to Market Junkies. In this video, we're going to deliver a fundamental deep dive into Sentinel-1. By the close, you're going to be equipped to make a decision on whether it is a buy, hold, or sell at current prices. Let's get into it. So who are Sentinel-1? They offer up a unified cybersecurity solution, and with that, they are actually a Gartner leader. For background, Gartner are a really well-respected analyst in the space. I've sold CTOs in the past that don't even consider your solution if it isn't actually recognized by their magic quadrant. In reference to SP activity, they did float back in June 2021. Today, they're sitting at around $42, and that's an equivalent of 11.7 billion market cap. Although their IP price, uh, IPO price was $35, they opened on that very day at 46, and currently they're down 47% from highs of $76. And according to, to Market Beat, this is in regards to their ownership, a whopping 56.17% of the float is owned by institutions and insiders. They were massively backed in the seed rounds of investment, pulling in investors with relative ease before even going public. And most recently, there's a 1.4 million market buy at $48 by Mark Peak in just December. Relatively small flow, as well as outstanding shares as well. Now let's take a little look at the industry. Cybersecurity is simply booming. So cloud was the last industry-wide adopted trend, where with cloud came increased connectivity. Increased connectivity equals a wider risk, and the more connected or more access points there are to a network, means there's more targets for a hacker to instigate a breach. Now that has a knock-on for cyber spend. Today, the threat landscape looks a little like this. We've got 30,000 websites that are hacked daily. 64% of companies worldwide have experienced a type of attack. There were 20 million and breach records in March of last year. And in 2020, ransomware cases grew by 150%. And we've identified four key trends in which we believe are going to continue to push this industry on. First and foremost, remote work. This one is respected by Forbes and Gartner and a lot of other publications as being the biggest trend for the next 24 months. Of course, COVID fast-tracked this, but it is set to continue. Think about it now. Devices no longer sit within that air office network. You need to develop new policies and processes to protect each device out of the building. And with that, a monitoring or endpoint protection is key. And that endpoint can be considered a phone, an IoT device, uh, or a laptop, for example. And then we do have the Internet of Things. Kaspersky recognized this as the biggest emerging trend to watch over the next 12 months. And it has been growing massively as people uncover use cases. By 2026, they expect there's going to be 64 billion IoT devices uh, in circulation. Now, that again, that type of device is going to require some level of active monitoring and protection. And with that, it's going to have a knock on effect for cyber. And then we have ransomware that we've seen an exponential rise. You'll have seen them yourself. The most, most well known is Riot attacking Western hospitals. What they did is they stole unencrypted data. They then encrypt the files and drop a paywall in front of the employees. Now get this, 70% of enterprise companies pay the bill. That's according to an IBM study. And I think the point is right. And of those 70%, by the way, increase their cyber spend the following year, and they were meant to have uh, earned over $150 million through that hacking. But the point is, is that hacking is profitable. With more devices and endpoints than ever, that industry is going to continue to grow massively, as well as the threat landscape and in turn, the solutions that are put in play to protect upon those threats. And then we have government policy. This is from a UK perspective. We have the likes of Cyber Essentials Plus, further regulations via GDPR, which isn't directly cyber. However, there are feeds in. And equally, in some high risk industry, you now are mandated not necessarily for cyber spend, but types of configuration. Now, I think with more digitally focused businesses than ever, it's only a matter of time before regulations stipulate either a minimum spend or a minimum type of regulation. Some bodies in the UK and Europe are already pushing for it. It's only a matter of time. The market size today is around 180 billion and it's forecast to exceed 370 billion by 2028. Okay, so the positioning of the business today. The top picture shows you the solution workflow, all in a single platform using machine learning and automation. It enables you to prevent, detect, respond, and hunt threats. The beauty of Sentinel-1 is they have something called an automated active EDR. What that does is the first level of what a SOC analyst would do, a security operations center analyst. Essentially, what they would do would sit there and monitor the area network and look for 
odd behavior, let's say, to report, well, this does it automatically using AI. They also have a ransomware guarantee. From a business perspective, I initially thought like this was pretty crazy because I've worked in cyber lightly myself. But actually, what it ensures is that all of their solutions are installed at best practice. And that is huge in the tech vendor land because often that is overlooked and they're almost pigeoned in to the customer network. And now I want to touch on the growth and their distribution channels, and they kind of tie in together. So there are 100K customers have grown over 140% year over year. They've had a 75% increase in their customers, and it's all due to their channel-led distribution. They utilize managed service providers, right? You go into Reddit, you can have a look at MSP techs. They're really active on there, and 95% of it is real, real positive. What they say is it allows them to save money on analysts as the AI manages that process, but it also simplifies customers, customer deployments because it's all managed from a single panel view. And I think that's the beauty. They clearly reduce cost, complexity, and crucially provides measurable value to the end user. And then we have the fact that they are a market leading product in both innovation and collaboration. Sentinel One consistently outperforms CrowdStrike in the MITRE, as well as the ATT and CK evaluations. They've most recently received a security competency designation for AWS, which is fantastic and great to see. But to add to that, over the last six months, they've added a number of collaborations and innovations, integrations with Cloudflare, Zscaler, ServiceNow, which is absolutely huge, as well as the likes of Remedian, which is very recently in there, privileged access management, possible take out there, they're pretty small, and Blue Hexagon, which is around continuous cloud threat detection, and it's actually a response learning platform. Again, possible acquisition due to their size, as well as partnerships with the likes of Keysight and Automox. And I would advise going and Googling all of these companies to see for yourself how high caliber they are. And there's also been a most recent RSO innovation, which has enabled them to streamline the search and the threat capability in legacy environments. And I'm going to take a look at the leadership team within the business. So it's founder led. You've got Toma, Toma who's the CEO. Um, he has an abundance of startup and investor experience, comes really, really well across in interviews, probably an ex exceptional leader, at least from the impression he gives. I would advise anyone to go and check those out. We've got Charlene who is on the board of directors. And I just want to note that the board itself is actually a perfect blend of investment finance operators, as well as SaaS based leaders and security and big business players. And Charlene is one of those big business players. She used to work at GE, of course, the conglomerate juggernaut. She was the CIO at one point. She's going to bring that big business view to the organization. It's, it's going to come in real handy, especially for the global expansion. We then got Jeff, uh, Jeff Yabuki. He served as FISF CEO. During his tenure there, they tripled revenues from 3.2 bill to over 10 billion. And the key thing for us is he delivered a more than 900% shareholder return through the end of 2019. Mark Pete, this is the chap who bought 1.4 mil recently. He is also overseeing a 200% move on Workday since they went public in 2018. He's a real vet. He's going to add a ton of value because he's walked the path, albeit a differing solution, but still SaaS base. The Sentinel One are on. And we've got Aaron Hughes. Uh, he joined in May 2021. He's the ex CISO of a number of companies, but I love this one. He was once the Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Cyber Policy at the Department of Defense from May 2015 to January 2017. He's going to have insight into policy as well as a network in government agencies. That could be crucial to the business. And then we've got another real important head, Richard Smith. He's the CTO. He is ex Medallia. Now, what Medallia were was a customer experience platform business. So connect, connect the dots here. It's all about simplifying that offer, having that single panel view, as I mentioned in the previous slide, and a slick user experience which will equal and improve user experience, adoption, and retention. And that's key for the growth. And then we've got Keenan Clondor. Uh, he's the CLO. He's ex Tableau. He actually was with them from IPO to the Salesforce takeout. So 10 years of growth there. And he's going to be a key guy, particularly of, because of the sector that we operate in. In cyber, there's a lot of regulatory risk, especially when you're looking to expand globally. Okay, so third quarter highlights. 
we have revenues of 56 million, which is 128% increase from the previous year. We've annualized recurring revenue. This one's really key. That's increased 131% year over year to $237 million. Total customers has grown by 75% year over year. That's to over 6,000 customers now. And the key piece is these high spending customers. We've now got 416 spending 100K plus, which is fantastic. And that represents 140% increase on that figure there. Operational losses um, has increased also. Um, that's up to 67.4 million as compared to 29.7 in the same period for last year. And then finally, our cash equivalents are 1.7 billion. So nothing really to worry about there. And the figures um, are certainly heading in the right direction. Okay, so Outlook and Catalyst for the year. Innovation and partners are key for this business. They've had 10 new collabs or innovations for the company in the past six months. They're continuously improving, right? Seeking out solid partner fits to further strengthen customer environments. And I don't believe this is going to slow up. I also wouldn't be surprised if we see an acquisition in 2020, as particularly with the alignment of some smaller organizations. And then we've got the increased number of 100K customers to watch out for. We'll have Q4 figures pretty soon. And with that rate of uh, increase, I have no doubt that that's going to continue. And then I want to take a look at high profile hacks. So if a breach hits the news today, the reputation dam damage to the company is enormous. Aver on average, it costs an enterprise customer $4.1 million, in dollars, with 70% of companies paying hacker, uh, hackers. Sorry, With each breach, there's going to be further spend it will be made. So further hacks are going to lead to an increased awareness in the marketplace as well as an increased spend. And then finally, new geographies in marketplaces. So we sit within the AWS um, marketplace currently, which is the largest cloud offer. Uh, that's going to give us more awareness with AWS customers. But equally, we currently sit around a thousand seats. And I can see via their career page that they're really opening up more roles outside of the states. And they've got global growth aims planned for 2022. To conclude, I give this stock a buy rate in at current levels. I think occasionally you come across an absolute juggernaut in the making and any entry in this business in five years time will be rewarded even more so given the recent downward pressure on the market. I am so, so bullish on the cyber industry. We see it's firsthand daily in the news with the breaches, but with the threats increasing, hackers have to adapt. And with that, the need for Sentinel One and other key players is essential. Due to their management and board, the current growth strategy, the innovation driven approach where they clearly add genuine measurable value to their customers and partners, I see nothing but continued growth, particularly with the 100K plus clients, which is climbing drastically, and equally the distribution by the marketplaces and MSPs really key. And it's because they have that easy to use inter interface and a more competitive price point. And I think that onboarding Richard as the CTO who has that experience is going to really improve upon what they currently have and they'll press on in, in improving that customer journey. The partner integrations, by the way, are enormous. They cannot be understated. I work in tech. The AWS competency is really cool, but the service now alignment is fantastic because they are a future unicorn. They may even be at that status now, I'm not sure but they are growing extremely quickly. We have 237 million in recurring revenues as of Q3 with a valuation of 10 billion today. You can see why a few analysts felt its SP was not correlated to sales, but the growth rate is extraordinary, 131% year over year, and they're in the early stages of a global expansion. Equally, the recent director buys of 1.4 million and a general analyst consensus of $66 puts this organization in a fantastic position and all in all an extremely well-run outfit and one that I would advise to buy on um, for future gains without a shadow of a doubt. Look, if you'd like my write-up on this, you can certainly DM me on Twitter. Uh, you've got my details there. Um, but yeah, thanks again.